I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some time with us. I'm really pleased today to introduce to you Annette Bolton. What an interesting story and a lot of rich heritage that goes along with your story. So thanks for coming and Thank you for and having sharing. me. Where were you born? Were I was you? born in Salt Lake City. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. And were you born uh, to active parents? And well, uh, active was... <laughs> They would think they were active, yeah. I think. My father smoked, and oh. my parents were social drinkers. Oh. And, um, but they were married in the they temple? Were, they were married in the temple when my mother was pregnant with me. Oh. I was the last of her children. Okay. And uh, you were just active, and were you baptized at age eight? And, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I was uh, given a name and a blessing yeah. and baptized at eight. And, and that was here in Salt Lake? It was too. here in Salt Lake. I was okay. actually baptized uh, down at the Tabernacle oh, yeah. by my father. Oh, that's where I was baptized too, actually. Yeah, that's not interesting, isn't it, uh, in the font down there below the it Tabernacle? Is. Yeah. So just active, young women's and... Well, my family, my father uh, and mom, they would go when it was convenient or holidays kind of a Christian Easter or Christmas Easter yeah. type thing or when someone had a baby blessed okay. but I enjoyed being home with them yeah. more than I enjoyed going to church I used to be like a, a project I was always a project for the young women's. young women and young men yeah mm -hmm. well did it work did you <laughs> no I still went when I wanted to <laughs> <laughs> I see but when you got a little older you actually come after high school then you Maybe yes. a future husband, I guess, and what hap what else happens? Um, when I was a senior in high school, my folks moved to Mount Olympus, and the bishop there happened to be related, a distant relation to my father. Oh. And it made my dad feel real comfortable to go to church, and so okay. mom and dad were very active. I became Up active with them. Mount Olympus, okay. And is that where you... Eventually met a husband there. Uh, I met my first husband at a uh, uh, event for single adults. Oh, okay. And uh, then we were married in the Salt Lake Temple. Okay. And did you have a testimony of the church? Did you f believe that the Joseph Smith was a prophet? And I could prattle it off just like anybody else. I know <laughs> the church is true. I know that Joseph Smith is a true prophet of God. Yeah. But I actually felt it. Mm -hmm. I really felt the church was true. I spoke in uh, a <clears throat> state conference and different things oh, to you? why I wanted to get married in the temple. And, yeah. and uh, I really... That was always your goal? Mm -hmm, that was my goal, temple. and I, I truly believed, that I believed it was true. Yeah. I mean, looking back, isn't it funny we say that, but we just, we just know it's true. There's just no question, really. Yeah, what, there's was no there reason. anything that came up that ever bothered you? Uh, yes, oh. the way my parents were treated, uh, because my dad's father was a polygamist, and his last uh -huh. name was Barlow. My folks had a really hard time uh, getting loans, getting places to rent, places to oh, buy, right. because they were polygamists, and this was Utah. Uh -huh. Or they thought, you know, yeah. people thought that my parents were polygamists, but my father didn't want to have anything to do with it. But it still caused problems. It did? Yeah. 
And, and you were affected by that. but In my heart. Yeah. I, I've always been a person that could sit back and look yeah. and watch people, and I could see when they were hurt. And it hurt me, too. Yeah. Did, what did you think about Jesus during this uh, growing up time? Well, um, I just always have felt him by my side. I, it was no different when I was born than right now. I, I feel like Christ is a, just a constant presence in my life. Wow. Do you think most Mormons feel that way? My mother used to uh, kind of chide me for praying in my mind all the time. And she'd say, you need to get on your knees and pray. And I said, well, you know, by the time I get on my knees, I'll forget what I need to pray for. <laughs> so I pray on the go all so the time. So you've always had a relationship with Jesus. I have. When you went to the temple and uh, probably in sacrament meetings, and did you ever notice that the messages weren't so much about Jesus? It was more oh, about... all the time. Did you? Mm -hmm, just Joseph Smith. See, and I didn't notice that at all. I just went through tithing, home teaching, keep the Sabbath day holy. Boy, they just teach those things over and over, and I didn't realize how little Jesus was in the message. Right. But you did. One of the... Um, do you mind if I use this? No, okay? feel free. One of the things that I was bothered with is uh, when the blacks were given the priesthood, because they were finally found yeah. worthy yeah. Um, in 1978. When they were finally found worthy. <laughs> <laughs> um, when somebody was, revealed the word. That's right. Yeah. I was sitting in a sacrament meeting, and Ezra Taft Benson came to speak. In your word. Yes, and I was sitting there thinking, okay, how is he going to reveal it that God made this available for the blacks. Yeah. And as he was talking, it bothered me because he said, well, after we all talked and, and discussed it, we decided. And that was the wrong thing for him to say. We decided. You, <laughs> it didn't sound very uh, inspired. It didn't. Right? It yeah. didn't come from God. It was them making this decision. Kind of a practical, organizational decision. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I just figured it was a sign of the time. I figured, okay, we're getting near the end. I'm, we're in the last days, and that was one of the promises, as I recall. And so that kind of, uh, but that struck you the way he said that we decided, mm -hmm. yeah, let's take a vote. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Doesn't sound very prophet inspired, does it? No. I, now yeah. that I look back on it, I think probably had something to do with money. <laughs> oh, I think so. <laughs> so you go through and you have. Uh, uh, your marriage here, and then things happen, and mm -hmm. and you end up marrying again. I did to um, another gentleman in the temple. I did. Yeah. Uh, I married him, my, my current husband, in the uh, Jordan River Temple, yeah. almost 28 years ago. Oh, congratulations! Thank you. <laughs> um, it's interesting, though. Both of us, on our prospective sides, had given up dating. Decided we'd both be single for the rest of our lives, or single parents. He'd, really, he had the child. Yes, yeah. and so. Uh, I the Lord kept telling me, I'm going to bring you, your husband, to your front door, and he'll be from California. But I never shared it with anybody. I just kept it you tucked just had that in my mind. In your mind that God had said that to you, and I'm assuming that happened. <laughs> it did. And my husband, uh, Greg, saw me in a dream. Oh, my goodness. And when he saw me, he knew exactly who I was. It's kind of funny, but uh, one... His sister lived in our ward, and I was in the Stake Relief Society Presidency. Okay. And um, she happened to be in the homemaking department, and we were visiting, and um, her husband asked if, she would mind, if I would mind if uh, Greg called me. <laughs> I said, sure. You know, I don't ever turn down a nice call. <laughs> and we visited for an hour, and he said he was going to come to Salt Lake. And I said, okay, well, I'll talk to you when you get here. And uh, he called me up a couple weeks later. In the meantime, he sent me a letter. And I thought, well, you're just a really nice nice mm -hmm. person. He had a voice that was very deep and yeah. handsome. And yeah. So um, he called me on a, let's see, a Thursday night. And he said, uh, asked me how I was doing, if we were still on for, uh, he was going to help me with some um, pruning of my gardens. Yeah. Because I'd had some dirt delivered and stuff and I told him I said I don't think I can meet you tonight I've got a lot of oh, things okay. going on and he said well um, it's too late I'm already here oh, yeah. so he said what time do you go to work in the morning and I said five o'clock in the morning oh, and because my son was in a private school 
and I needed to take him for an outing that they were having at the private school. He showed up on my front door uh, from California, yeah, and the rest is history. Right. Twenty-eight years later. <laughs> Twenty-eight huh? years later. Yeah. And he's a good active, or was active member of the church, and very, married very. in the temple. Mm -hmm. And again, at this point, your relationship with Jesus is good. Mm -hmm. um, the church, you're active, you're a stake relief society, it sounds like, and yes. other callings. I know you had primary presidencies and young women's and mm -hmm. everything else. Did you teach? The, did you ever teach uh, lessons and so on? Oh, yes. I love teaching. Yeah. I taught in relief society, young women's, uh, you name it, yeah. Sunday school. Just no question really the church it. was true. So what happened to you? <laughs> uh, my Our oldest daughter, who was bipolar, and it the ward was really kind of anti-Bolton at the time really? because oh. she was going to be making a lot of mistakes and it was affecting their perfectness oh. in their perfect little Mormon world. <clears throat> but I knew she would make it through and I kept asking the young women and the bishop, please let me be in young women so I can help our daughter make some good choices. Because oh. when you're a bipolar, you, have a, you, you don't oh. have good choice ability or you right. know making decisions and they said, I don't think it'd be fair to the other young women if you're there and their mothers weren't, but their mothers were all there. And then oh uh, one Relief Society or young women leader said, we, we'd rather you don't come because we know everything. <laughs> and I stood there and I thought, mm, you don't know this. <laughs> Sounds never... like a little more inspiration there, right? Mm -hmm. Darn it. <laughs> yeah. So you never did get to work with your young I family. actually went because I wanted to protect her. And yeah. Then uh, they basically but you just didn't, didn't want feel me very to, accepted. No, or? they didn't want us, me there, and, and uh, they just wanted to guide our daughter the way they felt that she should be guided. Oh. And so uh, we went through a lot of embarrassing, sad opportunity uh, experiences. Our girls went through this black phase yeah. and uh, I knew they'd get over it. They're yeah. just kids right. trying out things and I thought they looked cute. <laughs> they didn't look evil. I knew their heart, you know, but the young women's president held a gothic fashion show to embarrass our daughters, both oh of them. Oh my goodness. And uh, they came out mocking our oh. girls and our girls came home and Rips they told me, and uh, I called the, the young women's president up, and I said, what are you doing? <laughs> and, uh, well, the bishop approved it. Oh. And I said, that doesn't matter. That was very unkind. So for you, it was kind of a, a personality thing, and people, people in the church that were... Did you ever have any doctrinal problems with the church? You, you did eventually start studying a little bit, mm -hmm. right? And, I did. Um, and, I, I also studied... Um, Egyptology, oh. and when I was looking at a particular hieroglyphic form, yeah. I got out the Pearl of Great Price, <laughs> and I compared it, and I thought, mm, this isn't true, and I just shut just it Just like up. that? Just like that. That's not what it says. And had you read anything else, or <laughs> you just, you just no, felt No, I didn't know it was true, and I, I, uh, <laughs> I left, I've left the church twice. I came home to my ex-husband at one time, and I said, I don't think the church is true. And, he and said, what was the basis of that? I, we were working, we lived in a wealthy area. We, we too had purchased a home in Mount Olympus, and I felt they were, there was a young men and women program to help the boys and girl home. Mm. And so we went to uh, J.C. Penney's and bought a lot of really cool things yeah. for the kids. And I watched the way the leaders, they were all going about buying these things, and it didn't feel it spiritual didn't, to me. It felt very godlike. It and, did, and yeah. I kind of watched, and then they took all these wonderfully wrapped gifts out to the boys and girls' home, and I, I, uh, the kids were grateful. Yeah. They're teenagers. They've yeah. made a lot of mistakes, and their mind's not oh, the gratitude mind. Yeah. But I watched the adults, and I thought, this, is, this just doesn't feel right. Oh. And I went home, and I said, I don't think the church is true. <laughs> Come on, God was leading you with this, I guess, yes. planting that seed, and then again you do this with your... Well, uh, as I was a single parent, I was laying on the sofa one Sunday, and I heard, I turned on the TV and watched a, a Christian uh, Sunday program, yeah. mm -hmm. and I really missed church, mm -hmm. and Mormonism was all I knew. 
Yeah, so you went So back. I went back. Well, what, after the Book of Abraham thing, did you share any of this with your husband? My current husband? Yeah. I have, yeah. and uh, I started studying. Because he's active and returned missionary yeah. and everything. Yeah. When I left uh, about 2008 or so. Is that when you left? About that. Yeah. Um, I started sharing things with him that I was reading. So you started reading some of the I read, stuff. I've read stuff. so much stuff, <laughs> so much information, wonderful books. I think I always say books. <laughs> everybody knows more about the church after they've left mm -hmm. than they did when they were in it. So I don't know what that tells us, but it's... Uh, uh, it's, it's well, we're, we're blinded. Yeah. It's like communism. We were, uh, my husband and I were talking today about wards and stakes and where the terminology came from. Actually, the wards come from a political... Word. Sure, yeah, <laughs> so, the old ward yeah. uh, voting districts or mm -hmm. something. And they were always numbered. And yeah. Yeah. ward one, two, three, four, that's, <laughs> that's pretty right. comical. And uh, I, I don't know, just everything that I studied for, for my book, I Oh yeah, shared tell us with, a little bit about that. Uh, the, the, the name of it is The 19th Century Love Affair of Joseph Smith and Emma Hale. Yep. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about that. Oh, it's a wonderful story. If I say so myself, <laughs> but um, it just goes through how they met, uh, what happened through their entire marriage until Joseph Smith was murdered. And you use a lot of uh, references that from it's from not it's a story, so um, anything that you I it's it out not a bit. I fleshed <laughs> it out. I didn't quote anything, but the back of the book um, it will be a list of everything that I read mm. to reference my book with That'll or write the story. Months, will it? It'll be out in spring. In the spring mm -hmm. of 2017, I mm -hmm. guess. Well, that'll be fun to, to read that. And in your research, have you learned a lot? Oh, definitely. What kinds of things have you? Uh, the latest thing, well, two latest things that have really bothered me. I, I truly felt that I was called of God. Every calling I had was from God in the Mormon church. Yeah. And now I felt know. Felt all inspired and, yeah. It was all money, my tithing, because I lived in a, a, not a, a very wealthy area when I was a single parent, but I was doing well. Yeah. I worked for attorneys, and I paid a good tithing. Oh, okay. So that's why I was called to the Stake Relief Society presidency. And, um, I, I, you know, I'm <laughs> sure some would disagree with that. I don't know the inspiration, but you feel like there was... Uh, you, I know, I, I really know that now. I really feel that. I, was I feel part that's of really it. true because if my husband and I used to joke when we'd be traveling and we'd look up on the mountain and there'd be a high home on the hill, we'd say, oh, that must be where the stake, stake president pres lives. <laughs> well, I always figure the stake president's probably not the local mechanic or plumber or something. Mm -hmm. He's usually the banker or the, the attorney or the dentist or something like that. But it so. all has to do with money now. Yeah. And I always kind of thought it was just because they were successful and that would give us somebody to look up to, mm -hmm. you know, somebody that was secure and financially sound. And, and they we, had a really good testimony and a wonderful spirit. Yeah. We wanted to glean everything from them so from we could be like them could, when so we grew we up. Very much man-driven, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. So you've had this, as we kind of repeating this relationship with Jesus, is it different now that, uh, that you've left Mormonism? It seems more real. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have to do 128 things to reach Jesus Christ. Yeah. I can just close my eyes and pray to him and talk to him. He's right there. So you really didn't, uh, did you ever have what we'd call a born again moment when you said, okay, uh, I mean, because you almost need to say at some point, okay, I and it sounds like you've said it a couple of times, but I just, I can't believe the church is true. I must find out what Christianity has for me or what, what it is that I can, can really put my trust in, the, the cross and grace and those kinds of things. Did you have those feelings uh, as, and thoughts? As we moved out of uh, Mormonism, uh, we've had the opportunity to visit wonderful Christian churches. Yeah. And uh, my son, uh, he's eight years, our son is eight, and uh, he likes the Discovery Christian Church up in uh, Murray, 
And he says, let's go back to that fun church back there. Yeah. <laughs> he really liked that. He liked the praising and mm-hmm. the worship. Of... And he likes the fact there's a little kid pro, you know, program yeah. for eight-year-olds. And yeah. you know, So we just That's go right. visit. Uh, we get to uh, share in everyone's spirit and their wonderful uh, sermons that the pastors give. Now, you were telling me a little earlier that um, as soon as you kind of had this sense of awareness of the church, you, you just jumped into the Bible and started reading it. I did. The day I left Mormonism, and I would never go back because <laughs> I'm that kind of person. It's like my dad, when he quit smoking, he threw him in the gas, trash yet. can and he was done. <laughs> and so when I came home, said to my husband and our youngest daughter, I said, I don't know uh, what you guys want to do, but I'm finished. I'm not going to come home and cry every Sunday. And, and you were doing that for I was. a long time? And uh, I told him, you, we, you were welcome to go. I never want to stand in your yeah. way. Don't ever follow well, me. That's a good way to... Uh, but lucky for me, I found Doris's program. and Doris Hanson, mm-hmm. look at me what love is yep. this. Yeah, you've actually been on her show. I have. You? And I so. called her up, and, I, and she was on the, I was on her program, and I asked her if this was normal to cry <laughs> after church every Sunday. Yeah. And she invited me for coffee and that was... That was a big that was, step. Yeah. Well, you need the support and realize that you're not alone in this, that others are, have gone through it. And So what did you learn going through the Bible with, I guess I would say, with your scale, with, with your eyes open and the scales off your eyes? Um, did you see it differently than you had? I didn't like the it? Old Testament. It seems so mean. <laughs> oh, even even then, huh? I, I, I always look at Christ as being kind yeah. and uh, understanding and sweet. That's what I... Except I, the hypocrites, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Yeah. But, yeah, but compassionate. I loved the New Testament. Um, I still pick it up, uh, you know, yeah. read it constantly to yeah. keep close to the Savior. Did you ever understand the concept of grace as a Mormon? Did you... I feel, did not. Did you feel guilt in, in oh. making mistakes and so yes. on? And, one thing I, I made a, a big mistake in my life. We all make mistakes every day, but this was a doozy. <laughs> and uh, then I, I found out that my doozy of a mistake went from bishop to bishop to bishop oh. to bishop. And that really bothered me. And as I was preparing to leave the church, those kind of things really came up bothered. and sat down next to me and said, this isn't right. Yeah. Why should I share my life and turn it over to a man? And all I need to do is talk to the Savior because yeah. he knows my heart. Yeah, and did you did you really understand what he did on the cross and, and the grace and his righteousness and all that? Not until I left Mormonism. Yeah. Even though you felt like you knew Jesus or had a relationship, I always felt like I knew him, but I, I really didn't know him um, and what he had done for me. And his... Well, that's because in Mormonism it is never a focus. You know, you never focus on the fact that he, every drop of blood had me in it, had you in it. Um, His love has us all in it. Well, in Mormonism, it's all about us. It's us going to the temple, us taking out our covenants and endowments, and us doing our tithing and home teaching and all that stuff. And like you said, just a whole 128 things to do. (laughs) (laughs) And see God. Yeah. There's a new game out. I don't know if you've seen this. It's been uh, a new game that the uh, primary children are learning, and it's the steps to salvation. Oh, boy. And not one of the steps says anything about Jesus Christ. It's getting baptized, paying my tithing, yeah. having getting my married, callings, getting married, getting married in the, the temple. temple. Yeah. yeah, but Jesus isn't listed. Like, oh. it's just a, an afterthought in Mormonism. They yeah. should name the church... The Church of Joseph Smith of Latter-day Saints, yeah, not think, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, well, that's interesting. Well, gosh, uh, so your book's going to come out, and uh, has this been tough on the family? You've had, I mean, you raised some kids in the church. Yes. Um, our oldest daughter is a Christian. Oh, good. Her husband is a Christian. Yeah. Um, our son is an atheist, and he was a, a missionary in Independence, Missouri, when he was a young man. Have you been able to talk to him about his no, atheism? He's, he's just um, trusting God that he'll eventually yeah, he's get... He's 36, and yeah. I just I turn him over to God because he's a good man. Yeah. He's a, really a good person. Isn't that interesting how a Mormon can have this 
I mean, he's a return missionary and everything else, and then and then just fall away from God and Jesus completely. Well, he told me one day. He said he sat down with all the young men that yeah. were on the missionary mission with him, yeah. and he said, "Why are you here?" My, husband, my son's kind of outspoken. And he said, Runs in the you? family. He's why are you here? He said, I went around the whole table, Mom, and it was my dad said to pay for my college. My dad's going to give me a car when I get back. You know, it was just it was the whole table. He's the only one that went with a real desire spirit to, and a desire to go. Yeah. Well, and I've said before on the program that it, I realized later that I really wasn't preaching Jesus at all. I wasn't representing him. I was representing the church. I was baptizing people into the, the church. The church. You know, it wasn't about Jesus. So. Mm -hmm. No, it's just about money so that the yeah. general authorities can get their yeah. paychecks. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess that's... My opinion. The, yeah. <laughs> Off the cuff there. I, I know what you mean. <laughs> oh, well, you've probably got some some family that hopefully will listen to this. Is there anything you'd like to say to them or things that the mis misunderstandings that the Mormon people have about us Christians? The misunderstanding I happened to hear on a, a, a video from the Manti pageant. Oh, yeah. And uh, the stake president, I think his name was President Hinsey, said, All apostates are liars. And that's I not heard true. That too. We are not liars. Yeah. We're spreading the truth about Mormonism. And just, just take a minute and listen. And, and if something sparks your imagination or your thought, just research it. Look into it. Don't take me for yeah. granted or don't take anything anybody says. Research it yourself. And if we're liars, then that, that truth will come out too. It is. And it will. isn't that interesting? The LDS essays now kind of prove all these other things that they've been talking about as being lies all these years. And the sad thing Joseph is they're Smith not... and the polygamy and exactly. polyandry and stuff. And they're not bringing it out, the leaders in Relief Society and Priesthood. No. It's, uh, some people are asked, uh, active out guys, people, what do you think about the new seer stones? What do you think about this? Essays. And they go, well, oh, I don't I know anything about, about that. that. No. Yeah. And they're trying to be honest. Well, our time's up, Annette. Thank right. you so much for coming. You <laughs> have you. such a wealth of story, and uh, I really appreciate you sharing. Thank you. And Thanks I hope for asking your me. family and my family and others will pay attention and kind of listen and yeah, we hope so that's seek. the hardest part of mormonism yeah. we lost our youngest daughter she divorced us because we were apostates oh, i'm sorry to hear that and it's, it's rough it is and especially when we feel like we know stuff and they mm -hmm. don't well thanks for joining me again and Thank we'll you. see you next time here on the ex-mormon files